Are tech jobs back? Are the numbers going back up after a couple of years of decline in layoffs? Well, in this video, I want to give you some stats and data that indicate that things might be looking up again. The tide may be turning. And we'll look at five helpful insights from these statistics. Let's get started. Number one. Tech jobs are climbing, reaching its highest point since this time last year, according to CompTIA's State of the Tech Workforce 2024. In May, there were 209,000 new job postings for tech occupations, an increase of nearly 27,000 from April, in the highest total since June of 2023. In total, there were almost 427,000 active tech job postings across May. Now, a lot of this is due to a steady rise in job postings for AI occupations or positions requiring AI skills, which amounted to more than 26,000 positions, 12% of all tech openings. In addition, the unemployment rate for tech occupations dropped to 2.5%, well below the national average of 4%. And several tech occupation categories saw a double-digit increase in job postings in May, including data scientists up 24%, data administrators up by 18%, and software developers up 17%. Also, postings for web developers rose by 15%, network architects 12%, and tech support specialists by 10%. So the numbers are looking up the highest point since June of last year. Why is this the case? Well, we just went through a really tough time in our economy. The previous surge in jobs and everyone and their mom getting hired in tech during the pandemic resulted in too many people employed when things finally went downhill and caught up with us thus the layoffs. But now that interest rate hikes are over and we're now waiting for rate cuts, which there are expected five more rate cuts by the time we're into 2025, and one more expected by the end of this year, things seem to be turning around. And in the same report, early Q1 2024 data indicates an uptick in tech hiring as employers re-evaluate hiring plans that were put on hold during the pandemic, exploring growth investments that require new skills and tech talent. Companies are now eyeing growth, not merely surviving as they were previously, but growth especially with all this new AI innovation on the rise. And we see here top projected growth occupations for 2024. We have data scientists and data analysts at 5.5%, cybersecurity analysts and engineers at 5.1%. Cybersecurity is another field that's in high demand right now. Software developers and engineers at 4.8%, software QA and testers, computer and information research scientists, and so forth. And check this out. According to projections from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and Lightcast, in the next 10 years, the tech workforce will grow twice as fast as the overall US workforce. So the tech workforce is gonna be growing twice as fast as everything else in the US. And in those 10 years, projected tech growth rates in these same fields are 304% increase in data scientists and data analysts, 267% increase in cybersecurity analysts and engineers, and 225% increase in software developers and engineers in the next 10 years. Pretty positive data. Insight number two, JavaScript is still leading the pack. According to Slashdata's findings, the JavaScript community grew by an impressive 4 million users in the past 12 months, solidifying its status as the most widely used programming language globally. And here's the chart. Let me make this bigger. So here we see the size of programming language communities in Q1 2024, with JavaScript leading the way at 25.2 million. And the second biggest programming language is, you probably guessed it, Python. And it's most popular in machine learning and AI. And to be honest, Python does it all even outside of these two categories. And then the report goes on to say that the Rust community is experiencing the fastest expansion among major programming languages, which makes sense as Microsoft, Google, the government, they're all adopting it. Insight number three, specialization is becoming much more important as competition is still high. When we say that job numbers are on the rise, it doesn't mean it's on the rise the same way that it was before. We see here that the current labor market favors developers with specialized skills, particularly in areas like AI, in cloud computing. And just a note here, as I was stating on X the other day, many developers and IT professionals aren't really interested in AI. And while I would recommend everybody learn the basics just to be knowledgeable about AI, many just don't find it interesting. It's not their wheelhouse. And if you're one of these, I think a comparative and in-demand alternative here is to become well-versed in cloud computing and the security that revolves around it. This is because often when there's AI, there's cloud compute as well. And then combine that with the high demand for cyber security engineers, and I think it's a future-rich alternative. Perhaps adding the Azure AI Fundamentals or AI Engineer Associate certifications to your credentials could be a next 
great step. And this is why I created the AWS Python Blueprint, which is free by the way, for those who really don't want to learn web development but are looking for relevant skills in this industry. Python is always in demand and everyone is in the cloud, and if I were to start over today, I would probably take this route. I'll link to that free blueprint below. It'll take you month by month, week by week, through what you need to learn Python and to get two cloud certifications as well. So moving on, according to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, software development is one of the fastest growing occupations. That's still true, guys. However, developers with specialized skills are seeking higher demand and compensation, sometimes reaching million dollar packages. OpenAI, we're looking at you. On the other hand, those without specialized skills are experiencing lower salaries and fewer job opportunities. The uncertain economic climate is prompting tech leaders to adopt a more strategic approach to hiring, focusing on specific roles to meet business needs. This selective hiring can lead to a talent bottleneck and an unbalanced developer team. Tons of people want to work in Rust, but they only take the best. We need more Rust developers. They don't exist. And then in this priority survey, 73% of respondents stated that their organization plans on significantly increasing their budget for software development in the coming year, which requires developers. Suggesting continued demand for developers. Recently, there's been a major shift in the developer market whereby organizations are adopting a more conservative hiring practice, resulting in more intentional hiring for specific business needs rather than mass hiring for general needs. This shift highlights the need for organizations to adapt their developer workforce strategy to stay competitive in the labor market. So organizations, they're starting to ramp up again, but they're being selective and they're looking for specific skills. Now, I think it's super important personally to be a generalist, a good generalist as a programmer, one who understands the fundamentals and the concepts of what's going on under the hood. So whatever language or technology comes your way, you can ramp up quickly. And that's one reason why the Travis Media community exists, to help devs understand those deeper concepts which we cover in our weekly live events. Link below. That being said, in addition to being a generalist, it also helps to choose a specialty, whether that's AI, cloud computing with some certifications, JavaScript, AWS, whatever it is, become an expert of one of those things as well. It's what companies are moving to, and I think it wise to put one of those specific tools into your belt of programming tools, and of course, one that would be relevant in the coming years to decade. Like I've said in one of these past videos, you should figure out what your business is. Even if you're an employee somewhere, think of what you do as your own business and the company you work for as one of your clients. What services do you sell them? What specific services do you sell them? What services do you sell others? Figure out what you specifically do well in the software world, and this kind of thinking will broaden your horizons as to your specialty, as well as it may give you ideas for how you can expand your business in the future. All right, insight number four, degrees are still not required. Now, I know a lot of people hate me for this video I put out, and degrees, of course, do help, but CompTIA's report showed that 45% of all active tech job postings in May did not specify the candidates have a four-year degree, signaling that employers are widening their search for tech talent. They may think, we're not finding what we want in these CS grads that we've been targeting. Let's expand out and see what we can find then in the self-taught pool or the non-degree pool. Some essential tech positions had even higher percentages, such as network support specialists at 86%, with no degree, IT support specialists, 72%, network and systems admins, and programmers, 50% degree, 50% not. So don't get discouraged at all this talk about you need a degree. You'll never make it without a degree. Be persistent, learn the craft well, and fight for that position. And then insight number five, new states or places for future growth. So when we look at top states in the US by net tech employment, we get the usual of California, Texas, New York, Florida, Virginia, mainly the northern part of Virginia, Washington, etc. All of the places we already know about. But many companies are looking to set up shop in states that have a lower overhead cost. California is outrageous. New New York is expensive. But in other states, you could save loads of money by running your business there instead. Think Tesla moving from Palo Alto, California to Austin, Texas in 2021 due to California's crazy tax policies and regulations. And as an employee, your cost of living could be significantly lower. In fact, that was always my goal. I live in a place that's super cheap to live, but then I worked remote jobs for companies in big cities that pay big city salaries. Little city living, Big city salaries. I don't care to live in California or New York. I'm not a big city guy. I'm a family guy that likes to travel. The money that I save, I can visit these places anytime and travel elsewhere to get my city fix. In late 2023, the Biden administration designed 31 regional communities across the country as regional innovation and technology hubs to spur American innovation. 
For example, Oklahoma and Montana for autonomous systems, Texas and Oregon for semiconductor manufacturing, and Baltimore and Philadelphia for healthcare technologies and precision medicine. You can read about that in this report here. But then we have top states by net tech employment job gains. So these are the gains. Texas is up, Florida, New York, and then look at this. North Carolina. Now studies are showing even bigger growth in areas like Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina, which have already been pretty big tech hubs. That's nothing new, but they're also great places to live. I actually lived in Raleigh for a few years and there are so many little towns right outside of the city that you could find lower cost of living and a reasonable commute. Or even if you had a hybrid model, these areas are great. And then finally, we have this. Top states by projected percent change in tech occupation growth 2024 to 2034. So what are some places that are looking for big growth in the next 10 years? This is interesting. Number one, Utah, 33%. Number two, Wyoming, 29%. And that's mainly gonna be clean energy. We got Texas again, New York again, Nevada, and then Idaho. Also clean energy, I'm sure. And then we have West Virginia at 24% growth, Tennessee, Mississippi, and South Carolina another great state. But Wyoming, Mississippi, and West Virginia are actually states with the lowest concentration of tech workers currently. Yet in 10 years, they're projected to see major growth. So all these past months of learning to code are going to pay off for you. We all said when the market is down, then would be the best time to become a coding expert. Then when the markets take off again, you're going to find yourself one marketable, amazing person. Hope you were listening. So what do you think? Am I being over ambitious here? What do you see in the markets? What do you see coming in the markets? Let's discuss below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.